Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So I thought we'd do something fun today. What I'm going to do is set up SSHD or Open SSH Server so that I can use my system to copy files back and forth or I can look at um, my system remotely if I want to so I can use Secure Shell to log in my system remotely. So there's some cool tools that we can use and I thought it'd be a good time to go over this. So, on my Fedora 25 system, the first thing I'm going to do is a DNF list, and I'm going to look for everything open SSH. So here are my installed packages. Uh, the ones that you will need that I'm sure of are open SSH and open SSH server. So open SSH clients, I'm pretty sure gets installed by default, but if you do the DNF list command, uh, you can just do a quick check and find out which packages you have installed. Now I do have all three of those installed. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to need to start the OpenSSH server. So if I do a systemctl, as a matter of fact, before I do that, I want to show you this. If I do an ifconfig, my current IP address on this system is 192.168.100 so if I try to SSH to that IP address which is the computer I'm on right now the connection is refused but if I bring up using the systemctl command start sshd.service so there were no error messages so I've successfully brought up sshd I can now do SSH and I'm going to give a username 192.168.1.100 and the first time you connect to a remote host you will get this message and it's basically saying uh, are you absolutely sure this host is correct now if you know the host you're probably okay but if you wanted to know absolutely positively you would compare this uh, key fingerprint on the host system that you are logging into prior but in this case we know it's okay so I will say yes to continue and all I have to do is give my password if I can remember it and I'm now logged into the system using SSH but let me click exit here and get back out. The next thing that we're going to want to do, um, if you haven't installed it already, so I'll do another DNF list, firewall-config is a nice GUI tool that you can use to edit firewall settings uh, on Fedora 25. So in installed packages, I do already have this installed, but if you don't, you would want to do a DNF install firewall-config okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and run it right here from root because I want to be anyway and the tool comes up and what we're looking at here is all the firewall settings and currently I'm looking at the firewall settings for Fedora workstation and I can look at the different services and one of them down here in alphabetical order is SSH and you'll see it's clicked so it's already clicked and that means that uh, secure shell transactions back and forth are okayed on Fedora workstation okay so that's the firewall zone we're using notice also in configuration we have runtime so if I make this change now uh, and then commit the setting it would actually take place immediately and then we have permanent so I always like to check them both and make sure that SSH is allowed permanently and it is for the most part on Fedora systems SSH is one of the very few um, services that are allowed by default through the firewall so something to keep in mind 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. I do not need to commit it because it's already working. And if I wanted to have um, the SSHD service always running, I would issue a systemctl enable SSHD.service. Now, on this particular system, I don't want to do that because this is actually on my laptop. So if I did do this, basically on every reboot, I would be running the SSHD service and advertising that people can connect to my Secure Shell service. And I only need it from time to time to connect to it. So instead of doing that, I choose not to and I issue the previous command that we did which is systemctl start. Now if this was um, my desktop system and it was on all the time and I needed to get access remotely from other systems uh, I would probably use the enable command but since it's my laptop and I only want it on right when I need it for security purposes I leave it uh, disabled. So I would issue this command and then when I was done what I could do and should do really it's not something you want to advertise on a regular basis I would issue a systemctl stop sshd service when I'm all done. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to slide this system over a little bit and I'm going to go to whoops my MacBook system and I'm going to test and make sure that I can actually log into the system remotely. We want to make sure on another system that we can do that. So I'm on the MacBook system now and first thing I'm going to do is just ping the IP 192.168.1.100 and I can successfully ping uh, one thing that drives me crazy about the Mac is the command key is used for graphical uh, applications to do a control break, but the control key is actually used in the command line utility, so you got to get used to that. So I'm going to do an SSH uh, mark at the IP address 192.168.1.100. And of course, that first time it comes up, it asks me, are you absolutely sure you want to connect to the system? Verify the fingerprint key before connecting. We want to know that we are authentic. In this case, I do know, so I'll go ahead and click yes. And after that, uh, this connection is permanently assigned and it will not ask me again unless the key were to change or the MAC address, in which case it would break the connection and I would have to re-enable it. But before I could do that, I would have to delete the host. And that's a long story. But anyway, uh, I'm going to put in my password. And I'm successfully in. So I can change directory to documents and do a listing of all my documents. And if I wanted to, I'll just go ahead and do exit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do that transfer of a file. So I'm going to use SCP and I'm going to secure copy sshd underscore part 2 dot move, which is the file that I made here on my Mac system to mark the user at 192.168.1.100, which is my Lenovo computer. Then I put a colon and tilde and tilde of course represents my home directory so um, there are other subdirectories I could put it into so I could keep going I could put tilde slash uh, videos I just have to look on my system because I want to make sure that it is accurate I have a directory called videos so I could put videos and I have a subfolder that I use a lot and finally raw so I'm gonna secure copy this file and it should just copy it into the raw directory and of course it asked me for the password so I put in the password of my remote system and it begins the copy so this file is actually a decent size it's about 
four or five hundred megabytes and it's actually going to do the transfer in less than a minute which is really nice I don't have to go find a thumb drive pull out any um, USB cables and so on and so forth I can just go ahead and affect the transfer and then I'm done and of course with SCP once the transfer is done um, SCP automatically disconnects and you would have to do another connection if you wanted to do it again or I can use SFTP which is cool too 192.168.1.100 in case for example uh, I'm not sure which particular file I need and I can do print working directory it says I'm in home mark so I'll change directory to documents and I can do a listing of everything in here and if I needed to I could grab an individual file and pull those files out so pretty cool tools SSH SCP secure copy and SFTP secure file transfer protocol and of course when I'm done over here I'm gonna go ahead and issue the stop system CTL stop SSHD dot service and if I go back over here looks like I exited out of all my sessions so I will reopen terminal window and if I try to SSH again into 192.168.1.100 say connection refused you cannot get into the host so security wise I know that that service is back down the cool thing about this tool is I've used it so many times when I needed two or three files and even larger files as long as your Wi-Fi is decent or you are plugged into your network you can transfer files really quickly it really really makes things easy you don't even have to get up um, so it's really nice and if you had a centralized server you know you might want to put uh, Samba on there um, SSH on there so you can do SCP SFTP and SSH all those cool tools so hope you enjoyed the video hope it helps out and I look forward to seeing you on the next video